Hello everybody, all my very dear audio friends around the world. It's me, Paul. This is my humble YouTube channel and my humble studio, Warsaw Paul, and good to see you again. Guys, today's the day. I'm gonna take another of my old topics I never had time for, and this topic is hardware synthesizers plus remote VST editors for these synthesizers. How do they work and does it make any sense at all? Do you need them? Do I need them? Let's find out. Of course, if you think my all audio madness makes any sense, you can always subscribe somewhere here in the corner. You can like this vid, you can get notified and you can comment down below so that we have another fruitful discussion. Let's go. Right now, guys, I have five hardware synthesizers. Subsequent 37, ProfitRef 2, 16 Voice, Virus, TI Desktop, DeepMind 12, and my latest one, Mini Freak by Arturia. And guess what? They all offer remote control. And some of them offer it in the factory package, like Virus TI comes with uh, a remote plugin. Also, Mini Freak comes uh, with Mini Freak V, which is a separate VST instrument and a remote controller for the hard hardware. So yeah, all my synths actually offer remote control, and you guessed it also right, I'm a fan of it. Let's reveal what I think, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't have any downsides, or it's maybe just for me and not for you. We're gonna try to answer this question, and to answer this question, I created MIDI and audio tracks for all my hardware synthesizers so that we take a look at every single of my synths and at every remote plugin to control it, starting from subsequent 37. And if I wanted to advertise, to recommend remote control for an analog synth, that's exactly where I would start, because subsequent 37 uh, factory Moogmate plugin is just great for a couple of reasons. First, if you take a look at it, it absolutely represents the synthesizer itself. It's the same interface. So if you know the synth, you just stop looking at the panel here and you start taking a look at this very same panel in front of your uh, eyes on your screen, which is great and it's not the rule, like the universal rule for all remote plugins, I have to tell you. So this is definitely a plus. A plus is also that it's really easy to set up. You just plug your subsequent 37 in using USB cable, then you're gonna choose your MIDI in and out here. You can use a dedicated keyboard controller also here, but you can set it up also in your DAW and you're ready to go and you're ready to play uh, subsequent 37 using this very panel. That's it. So every single parameter can be digitally controlled. It can be automated also in your DAW, which is really, really cool. It can be tweaked. I have a touch screen here, so this is a dream. Like, really feels very physical. You can choose a separate MIDI controller to learn uh, whatever you feel like learning here. And yes, it just works and it works great. So this is like my recommendation. If you own Subsequent 37, you should actually download this remote controller and give it a go because it works. Great. The second thing is RAV2, and it's a bit different here. It's different because RAV2 synthesizer does not come with a factory a DSI se sequential mate plugin. You have to buy a third party plugin. There are like three of them, I think, and for me, the best one, the most stable and let's say user-friendly one, comes from a company called Sound Tower, and it looks like this. As you can see, it's not scalable. This window behaves just like cropping the screen for you. Oh, I forgot about one thing. Subsequent 37, it's fully scalable, as you can see, which is also great. Ref2 is not, so this is the first downside. 
The second downside, which is quite obvious, it does not represent the panel of a hardware unit. The layout here is different, and personally, I don't like it. I have to learn two interfaces, which I find no reason for. Like, why should I do it? But okay, I can learn the second um, layout. And the third thing, and it's the worst thing for this plugin and actually every control plugin for Ref2, is that it's not easy to set up and expect it not working properly and reading through some troubleshooting forums, manuals, etc., etc. Because you've got some settings here, uh, MIDI in, MIDI out port, you're gonna get some also global settings here. They should be set up properly here, both in the plugin and in your hardware to make this plugin work at all. Also, what you have to do is that you have to exclude a Ref2 from your MIDI devices. Uh, so you have to go into studio setup in um, Cubase and Nuendo and in any other DAW, and you have to go into MIDI port setup. And as you can see, I had to exclude Ref2 as my MIDI controller to make this plugin work at all. And even if you set everything up properly, expect this plugin to create hassle for you, like licensing hassle, that you enter your name and your serial number and it doesn't work, it doesn't want to authorize. So <laughs> it's not a great experience, but still I am using it because it makes things easier for me sometimes. And maybe this is the moment I should tell you why am I using remote controllers for my hardware sense at all? Because, okay, if I'm creating a patch um, uh, for any track I'm writing, I'm at the synth. I'm not here, never. I just take my Neumann headphones and I sound design stuff using the hardware. This is the best way when I make a patch from scratch. But when I want to tweak something when producing or when even mixing, arranging, when I want to automate something, a plugin like this for a studio person, for a studio producer, creates a really huge value. So if you're a studio person, a studio producer that has everything in front of you and you don't want to turn left and turn right to touch your hardware when producing or finally finalizing or automating things this is great i cannot imagine uh, working in any different way actually though this particular plugin it's not my favorite i have to tell you though when you set it up of course it works etc etc of course you can automate it you can use a um, learn function so that you can use some functions here and a midi controller etc etc next one mini freak and this is where it gets really really interesting guys because you're gonna have mini freak v virtual instrument that's an instrument on its own. Yes, uh, the panel here also is not the same as with the hardware, but actually it's good because the hardware offers a small little LCD display and a lot of knobs, and actually it's better to take a look at your at the inside of this synth using the plugin actually then the hardware as for me but it's not only a virtual version uh, of mini free because you've got something called link to mini freak here you just press it and it becomes a remote controller for your hardware it's one-to-one -one, very same it reads writes it uses same presets exactly same set of functions and it's actually great and it's very simple but there's one drawback here that I'm gonna show to you right now. So, when having this, I can modify it, any sound, I can browse uh, through my presets and stuff. There's just only one thing I cannot figure out, and people also got issues with that. Probably it's not just the function 
in the plugin and probably it can be fixed by the developers because when I press my MIDI controller, I hear no sound uh, from my hardware. So what I have to do is I have to create another empty MIDI track where I choose any MIDI, in MIDI input and then I choose my Mini Freak as my output and I use both the plugin and the MIDI track and only now it happens that the hardware gonna play. Everything's fully automatable, fully controllable, but I need a separate MIDI track from my MIDI controller next to uh, the Mini Freak plugin to control the keyboard and send the keyboard to the hardware. I don't really fully get it. Many people don't, and they find it quite difficult. But probably, hey, Arturia people, you can fix this, right? So please do it. Otherwise, guys, the plugin is great. It's very easy to understand, very simple. It offers three screens, home, advanced, and sequencer is here also. And yes, it's great to use. I already love it. Next one is DeepMind. Okay, so if Subsequent 37 was the one to encourage you to use remote control, I'm sorry to say, but DeepMind is the one to discourage people from it completely because Behringer offers no remote control uh, in the factory package. You have to buy one. And as far as I know, there's just one. And least to say, it's quite incomplete. It's easy to set up. It looks like this, also not scaling. Uh, uh, it's cropping, I can uh, zoom it here, like, okay, but it's not the greatest issue, because it offers a panel, it's easy to set up, you just connect it, it, it just works. Main screen, the only screen, is very one-to-one -one with the hardware, which is good, and it just works, I can present it to you. Yes, as you can see, it all goes from my DeepMind audio hardware stuff. So, so far so good, but this plugin is really incomplete. You can dive deep into sequencing, into matrix, into digital effects section of this synthesizer, which are great and make, and make this synthesizer really quite unique. And it's not there in the plugin. And sometimes when I'm producing, when I'm deep into production, I simply quit using DeepMind because it's not in front of me in its full form. So, hey, people out there, uh, all the indie developers, I don't know if it's possible, maybe for some reason it's not possible, and the control for sequencing facts matrix are only local, but if this is not the case, please make a complete plugin for DeepMind, uh, because this is very, very limited, and for producers like me, it's just not enough. What's really cool in this plugin, though, are two XY paths that let you modify two parameters at once in a really cool way. So yeah, this is a cool field for sound design, but it doesn't really consolate my soul because it's incomplete, uh, simply, and I wish uh, it was simply better. And last but not least, Virus TI, the legend of remote control. Yes, I think it is a legend of remote control because Total integration TI of Axis Virus was really kind of an innovative breakthrough thing for, for producers that transported all your synth using USB to your DAW and not only letting you control it in your DAW, but it's a sound source also 
transferred via MIDI as a USB interface. So I don't have to create an audio track. I don't have to plug audio cables into my interface. The plugin itself passes the sound from the hardware using USB and the plugin. And this is great. And well, I'm not a fan of how this plugin looks like. It's not too modern. It's not scalable. Also, the drawback, the obvious one, is that uh, Access Music Camper stopped developing uh, Virus TI, stopped really updating it. So this is all you get. I mean, it's fully functional. It's comprehensive. It looks good, but it's sl slightly too small, a bit outdated, and it's not going to last for ages without updates, so expect some further system or DAW versions that simply gonna stop supporting this plugin, I'm afraid, but having it, it's a must for TI users. And yes, Virus TI is of course fully dig digital, but the sound of its oscillators and filters makes it as close to analog world as I can think of. This is the best sounding outboard digital synthesizer I know, and that's why I have my analogs here. Of course, Mini Freak is digital with an analog filter, which matters. And Virus TI is the only digital one I have, and that's why I have it, because it's great and it offers TI remote control. Of course, it's not the only way you can control your virus, because you can buy remote plugins for uh, your TI. And the first one I can think of is by Aura Plugins Virus HE, and it utilizes completely different philosophy than the original plugin, and for some reasons, I used to have it, I used to uh, own it and use it, and it's closer to the hardware itself than the original TI plugin. Some people like it. I finally got more into the TI because it transferred the audio through the USB, but maybe one day I will get back to this virus HE thing. There's one more that I know of. Yes, it's by Asquest and it's called simply Access Virus TI Editor Librarian. I never used it. It's kind of old school, I would say, not a new thing. I'm not sure it's, if it's supported and developed so far. So you can easily stick with your main one or with this Aura uh, plugin. So yeah, I just presented all my hardware since and remote control for them. And you already know that, yes, I am all for it, but I did not answer a question. Is it a thing really for, for contemporary musicians, producers, and do you need it? And is it a thing actually for you? And the answer to this is that it depends on what you do and what your needs are, because in some circumstances, I would consider it a must. Like, if you're like me, mainly, so... You're a studio person that really produces, professionally or not professionally, but mainly professionally, when time is the factor for your clients very often. I mean, if you can control your hardware synth with a remote plugin, just do it because you're going to save a lot of time. You're not going to run through the studio. You, you're not going to distract yourself from your main monitors, from your main screen and your production workflow, just pressing some buttons and moving sliders and knobs. So if time efficiency and general studio efficiency is your thing, well, it's, it's just a must. Also, if you're just a hobbyist, if you're a music producer because it's your passion, it's just your life, after hours and you work elsewhere, it's also good to have this even if you're not like time pressed by your clients. Because if you want to make small tweaks or automate things in an easy way, 
while having a remote plugin in some situations still will gonna save you efforts and time you're gonna spend on some other aspects of your produce, uh, production. If you're just a pure synth freak that loves turning and tweaking synthesizers, and if you just collect them to have fun with them, and if the physical presence of your instrument at all times is the most important thing for you, and this is why you have and use synthesizers, forget about plugins. You don't need them, and I don't recommend them to you, actually, because, yeah, they will be a waste of time and money for you. So, yes, guys, it all depends. And how that how it works is it stable is it cool etc etc well also it depends on a manuf manufacturer because if you have virus ti with a factory plugin or mini freak with the factory plugin i let's let's forget about this keyboard thing for a while you can expect it's stable it just works and it just there of course ti is not updated, developed uh, anymore, so it can just stop working at some point, which is a drawback, of course. As for the rest, it's, it's not dependent on the synth itself, but on the third-party developer of the plugin for your synth. And these are not ideal, I would say. Uh, Aura plugins are really cool. I can recommend them. I have used them. I never had usual issues with them. I also used to have one by Mystery Islands for my Blofeld synth back then, uh, and Aura was called Mystery Islands back then, but it's the same developer. But for example, the plugin for Ref2, uh, it's far from ideal, from stability. It causes issues. It's not even crashing, but it's not communicating well with the synth, and I cannot imagine it's all the synth synth's fault. No, I really don't think so. Also, as for DeepMind, mm, it's not complete. Maybe this is on the synth side, because some of the minis may not be transferable via MIDI or an RPN uh, or CC and stuff. So and stuff. So maybe you have to use the the synth to get deeper into some menus. So yes, there are drawbacks and there are some serious limitations for some synths. But I still do tend to use my Ref2 uh, plugin. That's for sure. And subsequent 37 also with this factory plugin. This is the perfect thing. It just works. And this is how remote control for an analog synth should look like. Congratulations, Smoke. You really delivered, guys. And maybe that's it for today, because this video is probably really quite long already. And let's sum the things up. All right, so let's say we've got an answer. It depends. And this is the answer uh, when asking about uh, remote control for hardware synthesizers. Is it a thing? Well, maybe for you or maybe not for somebody else. But there's one more thing I'd like to talk about, and maybe this is the time. Some of you are going to say, come on, Paul, use just plug-in synthesizers. Use simply VSTs instead of uh, being surrounded with hardware with remote control. And guys, I find it untrue for a very simple reason. Analog synthesizers, especially analog synthesizers, with especially analog uh, filters and analog saturation, they are different than any digital synthesizers. And in many cases, for me, aesthetically, artistically, they are better, and I will never quit using analog synthesizers. Because yes, there is a difference between analog and digital, both in mixing, mastering, producing, etc. Just in audio world, plugins get increasingly amazing and high quality and imitating the uh, analog world better and better. But still, mm, after years of working with different things, I can tell you that I switched partially to analog solutions because, yes, I find them sounding better and since are my main field so yes i actually must have a moog and a profit machine in the studio because no other plugin is going to sound like curtis filter on this dave smith machine or the ladder filter on this moog machine my friends 
So yes, the fact of remote control has the answer, it depends. But should you have analog, <laughs> the answer for me is always yes. I just decided to combine it with remote control for my very own needs that I tried to present to you in a video form today, guys. I hope you liked it. I hope we're gonna have a nice, cool discussion down below. And I hope to see you very, very soon. Take care. Bye.